I'd love to roast you. <laughs> this is yeah, why we have a podcast. <laughs> true. But I'd Feel love to sit down. <laughs> you can Okay, so for you want a wanna, couple of days. Yeah. Really make it good. You want to properly just write. Yeah. S- s- go to a cabin in the woods, pen and paper, just uh start drinking at 11 and s- right into the evening. It would be so cathartic. <laughs> so sorry. So you've got pent up roast jokes in you that you just need to get out. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, I feel like um, the dyna- our dynamic is such that I'm always apologising for sh- being a shit shit guy, mm-hmm. and you always and for what I say on the this and in real life. And I feel like you're always on time and you always say the right thing and shit. And I would like the opportunity to just make fun of you just to feel better. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the purpose of the podcast, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't I've never told you that's off limits. Okay. Please don't well, do maybe, it though. Well now I have to do it. I'm too sensitive. I won't. Are you? <laughs> I don't know, actually. Uh, Let's see, okay. Let's test it out. Okay, go. Uh, no, I'm going to prepare. I'm not. Oh. Gonna, I'm not going to. Not going to go to a cabin in the woods. Oh, okay. So you're going to half ass um, it. I might go to a cafe though. Go to a cafe in the burbs. <laughs> this is the closest yeah. thing I've got. <laughs> Bring my laptop. Dress. <laughs> wear, wear something nice. <laughs> Tell people. People I'm think I'm working on a screenplay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, you know, I've never done nice. that. You've never what? Never gone to a cafe and just sat there with a laptop writing on a script. You do feel like a knob. Have you ever gone, gone and just taken your laptop just to go and f- use the Wi-Fi? Taken my uh, laptop to the doctors. Why? Just to take notes on everyone else in the waiting room. <laughs> You're just typing what the doctor tells you. <laughs> no, I just I put I down es- what you're saying. I put down estimates of how long I think they're going to live based on what I perceive their illnesses to be. Oh, six months—that's not good. How long do you think I've got to live? I say you probably got about twenty-five to thirty years. I'll take it. Yeah, that's not bad. Just as I'm hitting my prime. Yeah, it's better to gone. burn bright and. Twice as fast, right? Live fast and die even faster. Mm-hmm. There was a uh, tornado in Christchurch today. Really? Yeah. It, like, tore off, like, collapsed the roof of a building and injured a couple of people. <laughs> Sorry. I've, I've never actually heard someone say with that tone of voice, oh, there was a, uh, there was a tornado today. Just really calmly. <laughs> well, it's just you know, I, you know, I only discovered this fact about an hour ago. There wasn't a um, a citywide alert, which in retrospect feels quite dangerous. Um, but yeah, I didn't um, I didn't really know that that was a thing that we could get here. But hey, you guys got everything. Yeah, there was hail, Tornadoes, earthquakes, hail big enough to smash through like uh, veranda roofs and things. So my friends, yeah got damaged do you think new zealand's ever considered moving um it's something we could look into i suppose i mean how'd you get out there in the first place oh it's a bit embarrassing actually it just drifted really we're we're stuck onto the side of australia and the lost my hat went out looking for it stuck in the waves just another couple of million years and fuck now i can't get back Mm, classic Classic. What's the uh, gone? What's the um, what's the name of the world when it was all together? Uh, Gondwana. Pangaea. Gondwana is the uh, Aboriginal. Um, the oh god, is it the dreaming? The dream Gondwana land? Isn't that what they called? I'm gonna actually look this up. I'm gonna do real time. Ancient research. Australia. Yeah. Gondwana land. It's got a ring to it. Oh no. Yeah, Gondwana 
was the supercontinent that existed from the yeah so you are thinking so what what are we what was what did i say it was holy fucking shit do you Pan, what did i say pangea what's pangea pangea is this i thought pangea was the same thing oh yeah pangea is also a supercontinent holy shit I'm so we're smart now. somehow we're both right I don't think that's well, ever happened. Well, I don't think you... you well, 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 technically. Well, 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 I was more right because you said uh, God, it was the Aboriginal thing. Well, well Which it I, isn't. Which it isn't. I think so. we were both right in answering the question, then I was wrong on a separate topic. Yeah, so I was more right. You had one out of one. I had one out of two. But how many things did we both get right? One. You're not better than me. My str- Okay. <laughs> You're not better than me. Yes, <laughs> I fucking am. Welcome to Deep Ford, everybody. Gosh, a little while, a little while, but that's okay. You forgive us. I don't forgive Michael, but you forgive us. Yeah. Nick had Michael to have his me. roast. I had to have my roast. That's not the reason. Have it. Not the reason. Sitting through the internet with me. Michael, say hi. Hey. I thought you were going to call me Papa Mango. It's well, catchy. I was promised a new accent. If I call you Papa Mango, you're you ready. It. There's an accent, but you don't want it. Okay. And I'm, I'll stick by what we did. And I'm Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi. Hi, Nick. Hi. Hi, Nick. Hi. <laughs> this is part of your roast. You're just going to start by just some basic mimicry. Uh, <laughs> just like like a teenage girl in a cafeteria. Yeah. You would not believe um, what Bethany said. you got to go back to the basics sometimes. <laughs> but dude, I've got such a funny story for you. Oh. Oh, baby. Um, so my dad rang me yesterday and I missed his call at 10 AM and then I was busy and I forgot to call him back. And, um, and then he rang me again later and I missed that one. And then, so I, I went outside and, uh, and called him and said, what's, what's up? Is everything okay? Cause he doesn't really call that much. Yeah. And he said that, uh, mum had a dream that, I was molested by a teacher in primary school <laughs> and basically wanted to, he was like, your mum's in a, a bit of a state all day and she wanted me to call to check that you weren't molested. What the fuck? And so I had to explain to my dad, <laughs> I had to convince my dad that I wasn't uh, molested. And then wait, so he was mom. also he was on your mum's side. He was like, "Oh fuck, you know, did this yeah, happen?" Yeah. You know, I think there's a part of like, especially people who are religious, which my dad definitely is, sure, tend to assign a lot of more value to dreams than is actually. Um, I thought you were going somewhere different with that sentence. I thought you were about to say, "Oh, the thing with religious people is." You know, they know there's been these historical, uh, you know, issues with the church. And so they're more readily, you know, likely to believe in, you know, that this could have happened. But no, you're just going <laughs> because you believe in uh, uh, in Jesus. You also believe in dreams. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's, it's you, you, you would more um, easily assign like maybe it's like a premonition or something. Yeah. Or post-demonition. <laughs> That's not a word. Retro. 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 Well, that sounds dope. Um, and then I called my mum today just to, because <laughs> it was kind of funny, but also kind of sad. And it, my mum was, uh, dad said mum was actually upset. So I called my mum today and I was like, just calling you just to let you know it wasn't molested. And she was <laughs> like, Michael, it was so vivid. Um, and then she I'll tell you what she said. She was like, "This is what this is what happened in my dream. You were you were you were getting ready for school, and you were a little bit shy and a little bit more quiet than you usually are. And you're about ten years old, and we're trying to get you ready for school and get your clothes on because we're late. And Dad's trying to get on your pants. I'm ten. Um, I dressed myself. As 10. <laughs> yeah, I was so, gonna, I was just ready to jump in and be like, "Wow, late bloomer." Yeah. And then she said, and your father was trying to lift your leg up and you wouldn't lift your leg up. And then he just said, my bottom hurts. Oh, my God. That's what oh mum said God. to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Jesus. <laughs> and what did she expect from you in response? She, she just wanted to hear you say, yeah, that's that never happened. Well, I think she was put at ease yesterday when my dad, <laughs> my, my my dad said, um, I rang Michael and he's, you know, he said he was definitely not molested, um, had a good childhood, all that. And so I think she was put at ease at that. So she felt <laughs> comfortable. Okay. So I don't know what she wanted me to think. I was, I was like, what the fuck? That's such a, that's such a weird circumstance. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh my God. Thankfully, my um, I don't think I've ever heard my parents ever say that they had a dream. Just ever. Just never yeah. in my life have I even thought that they <laughs> had retained anything from their sleep. Um, so, yes, I'm not sure what I would have done with that. It, it, I'm trying to picture if my, um, picture how I'd react if my mum came up to me and was like, I was, uh, I was reading Women's Day and said that Taurus uh, should be a little bit more careful this month when crossing the road. <laughs> I'm just trying, just trying to picture how the fuck I would interpret that situation. Um, uh, but I uh, look, I think you handled that with tact. Yeah. Well, I was just mostly shocked. <laughs> and when I'm shocked, I'm a much nicer person. Yeah. Much easier to deal with. We know this. Uh, well, that's actually not a um, a bad uh, segue. Well, okay. <laughs> Molestation going? aside. Where are we going here? <laughs> Molestation aside. Um, this week, uh, you suggested that we talk about generations. The, uh, the idea of uh, boomers and Gen Xs and whatever we are, millennials. Um, we're just on millennials. We're uh, just, I think millennials. I think is we're squarely us. in millennials, right? No, but um, I think Gen X or Gen Z, I can't remember which one, starts at 1990. Right. Yeah. Should we look uh, it up? It's, it's all got a bit messy, hasn't it? Um, so the reason why I was thinking about this, um, and I don't know if I have like, I've just been just been mulling it over for the last weeks because of this OK Boomer meme yeah. that's been going around. Okay, so millennials are Gen Y. And they you see early 1980s as starting birth years and early 2000s or mid-1990s to early 2000s as ending birth years. So sort of uh, 1981 to 1996 is widely accepted but can be a little bit later. And then Gen Z is mid-90s through sort of the... Well, actually, there isn't, doesn't seem to be an ending on that um, demographic just yet, but yeah. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> well, my thoughts on the, um, when this, you've heard about this OK Boomer. Yeah, I have, yes. Yeah. Do you want to give so, a quick summary in case people aren't? Well, I, I can't remember. I don't know exactly what happened, but I think some woman, some woman in parliament used it to shut down. Yep, that, that certainly, yep, that, that came about after. Well, so oh, the, the, after. The, yeah, so the, uh, I believe that's after. I think the um, original context is basically someone had, um, uh, so the, the idea of saying, okay, hey, boomer, is a catch-all term for younger generations to use when they're in a conversation with um, a boomer generation or someone perceived to be, um, uh, and who is exhibiting the negative qualities of not listening to science, reason, um, logic as um, perceived by younger generations and coming out with uh, sort of classic um, selfishness or ignorance or something like that, which is seen as typified by the boomer, boomer generation. Um, and so this OK Boomer thing very quickly caught fire um, based on presumably some lingering uh, sentiment in younger generations that the boomers who uh, uh, had it easy and lived their adult lives through the 80s onwards and have been perceived to cause, um, you know, global problems in terms of financial systems, accruing wealth, ignoring climate change, that sort of thing. Um, the OK Boomer shorthand was a, a way for young people to basically say, well, I'm done listening to you because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and um, there's no way that we can have a rational discussion about this. Um, 
and it seemed to very quickly <laughs> hit peak meme, um, rocketed into popularity, and presumably the backlash is here or incoming. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty dismissive. I don't know if I agree with it, really, because it's just like it's. I just hate. I just hate how it. Uh, it doesn't. It's not helpful at all. I don't think. And it's so dismissive and so. I mean, I know all the. Everyone knows the those kind of traits that, um, boomers do tend to exhibit. Which is, I think that there's part of it is like a there's a, a sense of entitlement that baby boomers seem to have. Um, especially in their kind of middle-aged to older years now. Yeah. And millennials feel that their situation, be it with, I don't know, education, costing, more, housing, there being less yeah. jobs and housing that they feel pretty hard done by. Yeah. And they feel like that, that sense of entitlement is uh, really not deserved but, at all. But, and additional to that, uh, uh, it, it's kind of reactionary because for how many years now have boomers and, or, you know, the uh, older parts of our society been um, nagging on millennials? How many articles are there about, you know, millennials and their avocado toast? Lazy. M- millennials yeah. lazy. Millennials, you know, expecting good jobs out of uni and not w- willing to put in the work and not being able to, like, not wanting to settle down or raise kids or have a family or, you know, all this kind of shit. So... Yeah. It, there's definitely been years of, in which that uh, demographic slander was <laughs> focused downward. Um, definitely. And, and it so, still is. And, you know, there's an argument to be made absolutely that that was um, an unfair and unreasonable, you know, uh, depiction of millennials and thus a reactionary thing of depicting boomers in the same kind of stereotypical way is equally unjustified. But, you know, the the counter argument is that well if you've been doing it to us at the very least we can do is do it back to you you know that at a certain point that's it's fair game then isn't it sure it's fair game it's just it would be nice to be um above it i guess but i mean sure. it's just a meme so who gives a shit really um <clears throat> uh do you think that that view that many boomers seem to have of millennials there's truth in it, uh, in this, I mean, we're a product, we, we grew up with the internet and we grew up in our, but um, that's, y- sorry, I didn't well, mean I mean, to cut you off. Well, with entertainment on our fingertips is what I meant. Yeah. We ascended, and, we ascended alongside the internet. I believe one of the sort of key characteristics that people define Gen Z, the one that follows millennials with is never been alive in a time that the internet and smartphones yeah. and social media wasn't a thing. So I think they're uh, also called the iGen. Yeah. So the, the, the millennial era had a time before that, uh, you know, computers were a thing, but not, not smartphones, not really super fast internet, not social media, that sort of thing. So I think there was a bit of a distinction, but um, yeah, that, that's, that that's nuanced and not, not contradictory to what you're getting at there. Right. But do you think that um, do you think millennials are lazy? No, absolutely not. I think there's actually quite a lot of data about this, basically debunking a lot of those criticisms and um, complaints about this generation. It goes through and talks about you know, okay, so what did what did uh, university cost in the 1970s or 1980s? You know. Um, what did uh, housing cost? What, did, what was the average selling price of a house in Melbourne in, in 1970 versus today? What's, um, uh, you know, the penetration of the workforce of uh, women versus uh, men and, and the ease of which they got jobs? What's the, um, you know, uh, uh, people have gone through and con- compared all these statistics in terms of uh, the hours that people worked on average and, and the minimum starting wage relative to, you know, the um, value of the currency at that time and CPI increases and all that kind of stuff. And by just about all of those metrics, this generation and the ones coming up beneath us have it a lot harder. They're, they're just, yeah. 
they're statistically in worse positions. Um, I, I think that there are probably instances in which culturally the differences between generations is seen in a negative light in a way which is subjective. Specifically, you know, our generation's probably more likely to be on their phone, you know, potentially rocking up to work in a sh- in a state which is shabbier, you know, because mm-hmm. this is our normal. We got beards and scruff and T-shirts and we don't care about suit and ties so much and all that kind of stuff. So there's yeah. subjective things there where an older generation might look at the millennials and be like, oh, these guys are not even fucking trying, are they? But I don't think that's that's really connected to the actual data about the situation that we're in in the workforce or the um, economic situation that um, the country's currently in or that kind of thing. And, yeah, and the and I guess the climate as well. The climate change um, is a huge one. But- it's a huge one, but I mean, I don't know, how, like how how much can they be blamed for that one if the science wasn't there? It, but that's the thing. It, it was. It was there. <laughs> the science has been known about this. Like I think Exxon Mobil had reports on it in like 1980, 90, like literally a generation ago. They knew about it, and then they they actively did nothing about it. Um, oh, sorry, that Exxon Mobil actively hid it, and then like once it became. Uh, something more publicly known. It, it, nothing's really changed in in that time since like 1990 and now. What has actively been done? We got rid of <laughs> CFCs and we're starting to heal the ozone layer, but everything else about carbon emissions and stuff is has worsened. Yeah. Um, the so, ad- sorry, you go. Um, so the criticism there, you can't. In terms of the people who have the power to make that change, obviously the average Joe Boomer who just, you know, works in an office or whatever, they're not the ones in parliament. They're not the ones who have the decisions whether or not they do things about it to regulate industry or anything like that. But I think what is seen as the um, behavioural underpinning of... um, this generation, stereotypically, of course, um, is uh, a degree of selfishness. It's perceived as you had the information, you could have done something, you could have made the world a better place, but you're more interested in your own um, self-interest than you were in yeah. helping others. That's that's obviously the generalization, and it's not true of every boomer by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah. it was widespread enough and the facts were there enough for it to become the stereotype. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's, it's just um, it just it just seems selfish. Uh, I mean, all these things together, it just seems selfish, and it it almost seems obvious that I mean, if we had a we if we had a good run like that, uh, you, and you got to a point where you were financially stable or whatever, and you've you know, you've got some assets by the time you hit middle age, then you wouldn't want anyone, I don't know, telling you that you didn't earn that, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but, but I mean, there's, there is some hypocrisy to that as well, because yeah, definitely through definitely. the, um, you know, the seventies and stuff as this generation, sixties and seventies, as this generation was growing up, they were having the fucking, you know, sexual revolution, drugs left, right and center. They, they partied their way through a decade <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, you know, put on a suit and tie, rode out the 80s and the economic boom of the technological era. So they managed to have their cake and eat it too. And so that's why I think it's seen as, as somewhat hypocritical yeah. to be like, oh, you guys aren't fucking trying. When there was yeah. like <laughs> literally decades of people just fucking coasting, yeah. you know. Um, and it's funny because they came from the generation before. That's, that's the other interesting thing, that every generation is in essence a product of the previous yeah. generation. So in a sense, that they are responsible for millennials. And and <laughs> what is the generation before the boomers is like the great generation, the generation that lived through the fucking war. I think we can all agree, the best generation. <laughs> yeah, um, that's some good stuff. Um. 
<laughs> they, they did some good. They did some good stuff. But they, I feel like they earned that, and they didn't really. They that was a selfless generation. If we're generalizing, which we are, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's literally in the name of the baby boomers. The reason there was a boom was because of the that great generation getting out of war and being like, "Fuck, we got to like make some kids." <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. So that that whole literally the reason that it's such that the generation is named as it is is because of the previous one, as you say. Um, Megan Amram, who's a, a great comedic writer, um, she wrote something recently which said that um, uh, baby boomers are called boomers because one prick to the ego and they explode, uh, which I found it was quite funny. Um, but it How is... How old she? Sorry? How old she? Megan Amram. Oh, you do, uh, yeah. I don't know, probably in her 30s. She's like a writer for The Good Place and Parks and Rec, and uh, she did that oh, thing, right. Megan Amram, um, an Emmy for Megan. Have you watched an Emmy for Megan? Mm-hmm. Ah, it's good. It's like a little web series, but it's fun. I'll, um, I'll put it in okay. the show notes. Um, yeah. She basically, a oh, brief side note. Um, so uh, Megan Amram decided she wanted an Emmy. She wanted an Emmy and decided that the easiest way to win an Emmy was the web series category because it had very... Um, minimal requirements so the series is just a documentary uh, or you know mockumentary of her reading out the requirements for a web series that it must have six parts that each part must be more than one minute long Um, and basically doing that across the six episodes to fulfill the minimum requirements (laughs) and then submitting the web series (laughs) to the Emmys to try and win an Emmy um, it's very meta watch, and very funny. I'd watch that. Yeah, it's I'd good. That. You can that you can watch the whole thing in like fifteen minutes. It's great. Yeah, that sounds funny. Um, uh, anyway, so she's a good writer, and, and I thought that was a, a funny um, interpretation of the boomer generation. But I I do think it is. I thought you were going to say she just made herself an enemy. No, no, she she wants a real one, real bad. Um, but why? the because everyone wants an Emmy. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could have been like because it was her father's dying wish. Um, <laughs> the um, the so th- that um, idea about the boomers, I think, does hold some water as well in terms of a generation of uh, part, again. W- one of those criticisms about them is n- not just selfishness in terms of uh, self interest and finances and climate change and that sort of thing, but I think also culturally they're seen as um, quite uh, stiff or unwilling to change or yeah. uh, confident in their own correctness um, mm. and their unwillingness to, you know, actually look at the data before criticizing millennials or actually um, take on board, you know, a minority voice um, in, you know, or like a, a considering people's pronouns and that kind of stuff. Like, they're seen as kind of um, uh, unwilling to change as well, which I think is what part of the frustration of OK Boomer is has arisen from, is the idea that, well, there's no point even arguing with you, no point even pointing out all the ways in which you're factually wrong with this. So, yeah. OK Boomer, you know, whatever. I'm not. I've, you've passed the point of being relevant to my... Um, <laughs> interests and and conversation and i saw a um a graph on vox the other day that um showed the correlation between privilege and conservatism mm. and um and they uh, privilege in what go, in, in how, how do they grade privilege uh like income i can't remember demographic race Probably, I think age was another one. Okay, um, and there was they were saying in the article that people do tend to get more conservative um, as they get older, and it might be um, uh, your financial situation and your privilege might be a factor in that as well. Yeah, <clears throat> um, but it does seem to be true that people do do tend to get conser- more conservative as they get older uh, in, in any generation. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Do you agree? I'm sure that that's true because what is culture if not a constantly evolving series of, 
you know, agreed philosophies and tenets and morals and behaviors, right? And if that's constantly evolving and every new generation that comes up adds to and augments the thing, then the longer you're on earth, the further away you're going to be from whatever the current version of culture and society is, right? So if conservatism is a, a plea for the status quo, then by definition, the older you get, the more likely you want to hang on to what was rather than adapt to what is. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's not very surprising at all, really. Mm. It's going to be interesting yeah. to see where our generation breaks from the younger generation. What's going to be yeah. the, the, <clears throat> the disagreement? Where, where are we going to fall away from our, our kids? Is it going to be cultural things like, uh, uh, I don't know sexting. Like, if the younger generations like having internet relationships and uh, happy to share like nudes with people online, and uh, you know, virtual reality sex and robots and that kind of stuff. Do you think our generation will be like, mm, don't know about that, guys? Let's probably not try and allow the virtual reality sex to happen. Well, you could argue that um, it's it's likely that the gap or the um, <clears throat> the differences or ability to understand uh, the previous generation or the next generation will be greater from us to I don't know maybe not like Gen Z or whatever, but like maybe a few down the track will be greater than like boomers to millennials because technology is moving expo- exponentially. Yeah, that's possible. But the flip side to that argument is that if technology has evolved so fast and we're used to it evolving fast, we'll actually be more capable of adapting to the changing circumstances because we're familiar with that. Mm, that's true. Yeah. yeah. It's a good thought experiment. I, I think we've probably done it. Yeah, we've touched uh, on it. On the old Potteroo before, <clears throat> um, I like trying to imagine what the next generation will blame us for. Yeah, the blame um, thing's interesting. I just had a thought then, which is connected to what I was talking about earlier, which is the point of difference. I wonder, I can envisage a, a difference between our generation and the next generation um, on the idea of privacy. I think okay. our generation still values. Um, you know, our house is our house, our internet is not watched, our, you know, thoughts are our own, our lives can be separate from everything else. And I wonder if the next generation, which has grown up with social media and everything and is used to sharing and to seeing people share all of their lives, will find that conceptually kind of absurd. The idea that (laughs) I can't believe you're just not like live streaming while you're taking a shit or whatever. Um, I can envisage that as being not, not necessarily a point of conflict between the generations, unless as our generation becomes parents and we're trying to stop our kids from doing things that we would never have dreamed of sharing when we were growing up. Um, yeah. And and then the kids are sort of <laughs> calling us old fogies for not um, wanting to share our lives every second of every day. Mm, yeah, that's true. Um, sorry, you were I talking. They're looking at. I think they'll. I think the meat thing is going to be big, are going to be a big point of difference. Mm. In that, we'll have the technology to change how meat is uh, produced, and so looking back at the way we that we Farmed. produce meat now will yeah. seem so brutal and evil and i think also the um the general diet change beyond that as well even to more of a plant-based diet either by necessity or cultural desire um for um climate change reasons as well i think the idea that every meal had to have meat in it in and of itself was would also be like i could imagine like grandkids looking at their grandparents and being like I can't believe that you had, you know, meat and three veg every night of the yeah. week and and thinking how absurd that was to and how like 
privileged and insensitive it would be to expect yeah. a steak on your plate every night. Um, yeah. Well, they're just eating a plate full of grasshoppers. Yeah. And <laughs> and honestly, probably with with no concerns whatsoever. Yeah. The avo the avo the avo toast thing was interesting because. I mean, it was weirdly pushed by the media from, like, you know, the usual suspects, Herald the Sun, whatever. Yeah. And it's... It's a conservative it, talking point. It's kind of funny because it seems that, um, I mean, maybe there is a, you know, people our age maybe do spend or are inclined to spend money going out for brunch and stuff. Um, but it also seems kind of despondent in a way because it's like, well, I'm not going to be able to buy a house. And yeah. I, I don't know if that's just like, well, I'm just throwing my hands up in the air. If, I'm, if I can't buy a house, I'll just have some avo and toast. It's also so lame. Like avo, it's, avocados don't cost anything. It's fine. Uh, avocados are expensive sense. over here, but anyhow, that's neither here nor there. But the How um, much for an avocado? Like $3.50, $4.00. Really? For a single avocado, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're bloody expensive. Um, a lot of produce some. in New Zealand, thank you, is expensive. Um, the the thing is, like, there's no direct co- direct thought, which is like, oh, I was going to buy a house, but it's uh, 1.7 million, so I oh, guess I'll go have brunch instead. Um, yep. But at the same time, I think it is a valid reaction to be like, well, I'm still paying off my student debt and I can't get a job which uh, is anything more than grunt work and uh, there's no chance I'm going to be moving out of this shitty rental home anytime soon. So what's something that can make me happy? I can go and have a nice bite to eat. And yeah. I think it is totally valid for people to go and seek <laughs> like a happiness moment. Um, and what is that? What is one of the ways in which that's expressed? Um, I'm going to go have some fucking toast, you know? Like, I... I there is a connection there, but I don't think it's um, a direct one, nor that I think that you were implying it was. But it's just yeah. it sh- it shows the lie of the um, again this sort of talking point about it all, as if if you didn't have the avocado toast, you'd be able to afford a home, which is it, again ultimately it's one of those things where it's like okay, boomer, you you clearly don't know what how many people are. Uh, uh, struggling to find even full-time employment, how much they're getting paid on average. Like your suggestions are disconnected from reality. So, yeah, you know, fuck you. I think think there's also a hint of they also kind of don't understand avocado on toast. Like it's it's kind of like a weird, (laughs) it's like a weird, like they don't even really, I don't know any boomers that would have avocado on toast. My parents certainly wouldn't. I I um, genuinely like I know kind of for a, a fact thing. that my dad has only kind of discovered that breakfast and and brunch was a thing in like the past two yeah. years, yeah. literally <laughs> in the, like literally in the past two years, um, and only because um, either when I was over in Adelaide for the holidays and we'd like I had a, um, I remember I, I was flying back to Christchurch, and the family was there and it was like an eleven a.m. flight or 12 o'clock flight, and um, we were just having, like, one kind of final get-together before I was heading off. So we thought, okay, we'll go out and get some breakfast before we head to the airport. Sitting down yeah. at a nice cafe in Adelaide, um, ordering my, you know, poached eggs or whatever, and Dad looks around and says, oh, gosh, this is pretty good, isn't it? A lot of, a lot of people here. Um, and that was the point at which we realised that he didn't actually – know that this was a thing that people did and <laughs> was was popular um and That's i cool. you know uh i i think that you're totally right that they don't uh, it, it was never a sort of a, a cultural thing um and so it just seems I, all very silly and foreign to them yeah i can say with 100 percent certainty that my dad will die having never had brunch <laughs> When your dad's in Melbourne next, I'm going to take him out for brunch. I was, at, I was, at, I was, I had brunch the other day, and Melbourne's really good for brunch. Ugh, I'm really, yeah, I'm really pandering to the boomers now, aren't I? <laughs> but I went, went out for brunch with Emma, and they were just playing Radiohead. It was just like it was just some cafe that we stumbled into. It was like, yeah, this is the best. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, what you, brunch is exactly dope, what you dude. mean. 
Bradshaw's so, Bradshaw's so fucking dope. Oh, so dope. <laughs> it's like rad. Bradshaw's uh, rad. Hashtag um, blessed. Hashtag inner city living. Hashtag insta famous. Um, hashtag talk to me about yum. That's a real hashtag. <laughs> That's a real hashtag that I saw the other day. Talk to me about yum. Yeah. That was That's a f- very I, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. My dad would be chuffed. He's in Melbourne, not infrequently, so um, you should do that. Yeah. No, um, the uh, speaking of parents, how how do you interact with your parents these days? Because we are both officially, um, I double checked, um, we're both officially adults, so we're living Speak independent. Yourself, we're living independent lives. We're in our thirties. Um, we're long out of the nest. Um, how how do you deal with your parents? Do you find? I mean, you 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 talked about this a little bit at the start of the. Um, pod with the uh a dream story but do you f- find yourself uh increasingly irritated with them or more uh frustrated like do they treat you like a child still can you have a conversation where you're you, you can say actually i don't need your advice on this or i don't need your help or i don't need you know or, or, how have you found this relationship good question a bit of both, but I would say that my dad especially is kind of chilled out in his later years or since the kids have left. So that's been nice. When we were younger, we I was really hot headed, especially with like the atheism and stuff. It was kind of like screaming out for my identity, and you know, I was like, I found out that there's no God, and you still believe in it, and wanted to ram that down everyone's throat. So that caused conflict. But we both also, my dad and I, and you know, all of us, Dan and Ben and stuff, we all quite like having that debate and that argument, especially with regards to that topic. But I feel like like my parents are uh, cool now. I, I just asked Dad for help writing a cover letter actually the other day, which was interesting because I've always kind of, he's always been kind of good with that stuff. But um, it was interesting, like I for the first time kind of rejected some notes that he had mm. um, on my cover letter because I felt like it wasn't actually, like, appropriate, which that felt that felt interesting. I also asked Laura for for help with this cover letter and and he was like, she was like, oh, no, don't take Dad's note here and stuff. So that was a weird kind of, well, not weird. It was a kind of a cool feeling. Like, I felt like it was, like, more of my... I'm more of my own man in that in that way, even that for like a little thing like that. Mm. And I mean, you, probably for rational reasons, as you know, like uh, uh, Laura and you are, would have had more experience in applying for jobs in the current market than your dad True. will have. Um, yeah. So his perceptions as to what is effective or necessary is probably not necessarily based on current realities. Yeah. And my mum, you know, if I've ever told my mum that I've, we got an interview for a job. Um, she she will one hundred percent always be like, make sure you set, shave and wear a suit. And that's not necessarily like I applied for a job at a creative agency that I got an interview for. Yeah, a oh, couple cool. of months ago, and the the I chose not. To, I thought that the, having a beard would actually like it's probably a stupid thing to think about, but I thought you know in some respects having a beard is actually okay. Yeah, like yeah. I went on the website, saw the directors. They've all got like they look like hipsters and have giant yeah, yeah. beards and stuff. So, but I have a good. I have. I talk to my parents, you know, on a pretty good level these days. What about you? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I think with my dad these days, I'm on a pretty pretty level um, sort of interaction. Like I think we both treat each other as adults. Um, and you know, dad will still want to give advice, um, which is helpful. Um, but I think he has begrudgingly gradually also come to realize that I won't always necessarily act in the way that he would advise. Do you know what I mean? Like he wants to be heard, um, which is totally valid, but, and included, um, 
but I think he's come to realize as well that I'm going to make my own choices in certain aspects of things. Um, and I think that's, that's been rather healthy. Um, and, and, you know, my dad, he's, um, he's always been, um, future looking and forward looking and enthusiastic yeah. for today. Um, yeah, for, 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 sure. for most, in most ways. He's cool as shit, dude, from my perspective. Yeah. I think he's the coolest. Yeah, no, he is a he is a cool dad. Um, there are there are. It's interesting because there are certain areas of the relationship with my parents which I haven't um, broached yet. Um, like they're they're still kind of uh, in the dark about my gay life, my gay side. Um, yeah. I've not had a long-term boyfriend which i've brought home to them and i don't know where necessarily that will rub up against their um um sensibilities or whatever um mm. so that that might be interesting or it might be easy it's a little um hard to know though i did <laughs> that did the other day um i was explaining how i uh so one of my friends here got married and i was close friends with her um and friendly with but didn't really know mm. Um, his side that much um so i was invited to the hens night because all of her friends and um the friendship group that i knew was on her side and all of his side were just foreign to me um so i was they were were foreigners Uh, they're from rural new zealand (laughs) um but sorry i just casually was talking about how Um, I was out at this dinner and it was um, a a nice night and uh, both my parents stopped me and said, you were at a hen's night? I was like, yep, yep, (laughs) yep. They're like, but isn't a hen's night for girls, Nick? I was like, well, um, it may used to have been, but uh, no, anyone can go to a buck's night or a hen's night these days. It's um, kind of a free for all. Um, and they were genuinely like, oh, oh. And they just like looked at me like so strangely for a moment. And it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. But did they think you were being invited because you're the gay friend? I'm not sure what they thought. I'm not sure whether that was part of it. Um, it could have been. I, I also did explain that I knew her better than I knew him. So if you were going to be included in one, it was definitely preferable to be there with all my friends rather than <laughs> just arbitrarily in the other group because we were both men. Um, yeah. But, um, and I, you know, they got past it, but um, yeah. So that was just like one of those examples where I was thinking, Oh, there, there's probably still, there's probably still differences between us or uh, like uh, social or cultural things that will um, brush up against that. We, don't know yet. Um, yeah, that will come in. We'll we'll butt our heads about, or you know, be yeah. at cross purposes about, but we haven't encountered yet. Um, so that's that's so, interesting to think about. Yeah, we're probably coming into a good age with our parents now because it's kind of like they're starting to see us probably probably now as as adults and on the same level. And there seem it's like a nice like kind of overlap period here where they're still kind of you know hitting 60 and they're still kind of, you know, God, hitting um, 60. My parents cleared 60 a long time ago. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, yeah. Minus 60, but like, yeah, yeah. It still applies. Yeah. They're, they're getting still, into the, this retirement they're still young phase. enough to be, yeah. to relate to you and, and you're now getting old enough. Um, but it's, it's also part of kind of realizing that your parents, uh, people that you, you start to get, I feel like at 30, you start to get a real sense that your parents might not have known what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. And that's nice. And it's like completely humanizes them. Adam Buxton is my favorite podcast. Um, was talking the other day about being a dad to, um, I think he's got like a couple of 15 year old girls. And he says, um, he said, um, sometimes I worry that, that they think that I've got it all figure it out, figured out, and really I just, I'm just making it up. Yeah, um, and I think that's really nice. Yeah, to just just to start to have that. Would your parents ever say we were just making it up? 
guilty. My dad wouldn't. No way. And I don't think my mum did. <laughs> Just make it up. So, um, what do you think your mum used for her? Um, what? What was? She, why was she confident? What did she base her decisions well, I, on? I was. Yeah. She. I did. Oh, she obviously did. Was making it up to a degree, but she's quite. She's a quite a. I don't know. I thought maybe I don't know. She seems like maybe they just like tried it all tried all out on me first. Um, got the wacky methods out the way, and then kind of really brought it home for Ben and Laura. Right. Don't know. Yeah. The um. There's definitely sort of other um. Like w- with my mum, who I'm very close with and respect a lot and love a lot. Um, but there are definitely situations where I think um, we're just very different in what we, in how we approach situations and that sort of stuff. Um, um, there have definitely been times when um, we've been having an argument, um, which is kind of rare because um Mum does not like having arguments at all. She doesn't even like having like conversations in which people disagree. Um, so she's very much a, a conflict avoidance kind of personality. Yeah. Um, but there have definitely been times when she said, "Like I don't think this is something that we'll ever agree with, so we'll just never let's never talk about it again. So we just won't bring it up <laughs> and um, so just sweep it under the rug." Yeah, just like except that this is an unchangeable perspective from both both. Um, uh, both parties, and so we'll just pretend it doesn't. It doesn't happen. It didn't exist. A, yeah, I mean, I can relate to that for sure. I mean, that's one of those things that you have to do in a um, relationship, right? You forgive people, or ignore things, or make things less important than they are in order to maintain something more important. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just interesting to see that in a generational lens. Um, do, uh, I mean, you we know that you love an argument, so I have to imagine that if your kids came up to you and with, said, uh, "Dad, you're being sexist," or you know, whatever, <laughs> you'd be like, "Fucking ready to go." You'd be like, "This is exactly the, everything I wanted kids for." Tell me, tell me why, and I'll tell you why you're wrong. You know, like you'd you'd be into it right um i don't know i think that i'm actually i think i my bark is worse than my bite in this regard i think i think i actually am i know i do love the argument but it's kind of like just the sport like it's just fun sometimes um (laughs) you know i went to a halloween party the other day and I wore a um, make Donald Trump again hat hmm. and um, it looks like the MAGA hat. Yeah. And some girl <clears throat> at like 4 a.m. comes up to me and goes, you're disgusting for wearing that. <laughs> and I was like, here we go, baby. Inebriated, presumably. Oh, I had a few drinks. She. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, but. That was to your point that I, I kind of invite the confrontation, um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think about having kids. I think about having, uh, like a if I had a daughter, I feel, I can feel the the feeling of having a daughter like now. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I can uh, you feel. Can I already feel protective feel the responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, I already feel protective, and I also I already feel like she can have whatever she wants. Uh, <laughs> this is weird. I don't really feel like that about my son, which I don't also don't have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've thought about this. You've, quite a you've bit. pre-gendered really your interactions with your kids. It's quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um. Do you uh? think that there is a solution to the uh boomer conflict do you think that there is a way to get through to them do you, what what and what what should that 
should people try? Yeah. I don't know. They love they love Kindle <laughs> and they love a current affair. So maybe some oh, subliminal fuck. I don't know. Um I don't really know. I, I mean I'm inclined to say there's nothing you can do. Just wait till they die. No, that's a joke. There's some element I mean, of truth in that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have solutions. I only, I only have problems. <laughs> We've known you've had problems for years. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. It's one of those questions which is different uh, on mass than it is in individuals. Like uh, if you were specifically dealing with your parents and a problem with your parents' behavior, say, is it something that you would keep trying to press, keep trying to fix, or would you accept that they're unchangeable? I had a bit of a, I don't know, my parents voted for liberal and my parents, like my mum, my mum, who's quite a reserved person, will just say something like in our family thread, like, well, thank, you can thank the late, you can thank bloody Malcolm fucking whatever. What's his name? You can thank Bill, Bill Shorten, Shorten for that, or yeah, she's just. I just sometimes I think like you're seriously only getting your news from a current affair and <laughs> from just you know really one sided kind of um, sources. Uh, and I don't know, it's just kind of not worth it in a way, unless it's unless they unless they're kind of. Um, I mean, I've had arguments with them on, you know gay marriage uh, with my dad on that. And that one felt worth it to debate. And that was, it's easier when you've got like a clear idea of, of, um, of why you think it's right. But I don't know. Some, most of the time I, I don't really engage or I just make a stupid joke. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, did you feel like you got somewhere with your dad when having a gay marriage discussion? Yeah. Do you know yeah. that he you changed his opinion or that he just understood it better or No, I think I think he did understand it better. And I think a part of that was um uh I think a part of that was meeting you actually. Really? To be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um cuz he likes you and he's met you a few times and um I think his his idea. I don't think he's no, he doesn't think he's known many gay people, right? In his in his life, I feel weird kind of talking for him, but yeah, um, I think it was like I don't know because we're we're pretty close, and he was. I think it, seeing us be close friends was, um, and see, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to speak for him. No, I was. Yeah, that was my impression. Curious. That's yeah, um, yeah. I think he's more open minded these days. Now I think the religion gets in the way a lot in a lot of in a lot of the shit, to be mm. honest. But his religiosity hasn't changed, has it? No. You, so no, it, 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 it just sort of confused. like it was a yeah. It was a confounding influence in in the consideration. And that he was yeah. able to push that aside or keep that aside um to think about it sort of independent of that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting um, because there are certain situations in which I think, you know, if you take the climate change situation, right, and the idea that we're on a serious ticking clock, you know, 10 years now to to make significant changes into the way our entire society is powered, fed, transported, worked, you know, it, it, top to bottom is going to need real significant movement yeah. can you morally justify saying well we can't change these people well we'll just have to wait for them to die and then pick up the pieces once they're gone it's um on a de- on a domestic personal level yeah sure but like on a on a global level no you can't do that yeah so if the, this is the kind of the the dilemma though it's the um 
the game theory of it all, I suppose, is like if every person thinks, well, I can't fix my parents, then as a society, we have given up on changing a generation and making the action. But um, it, it, we don't want to accept that, do we? So that means that at some point, some people will have to speak to their parents about this thing and actually get through to them. <laughs> um, but are we trying to change them because they can help? Yeah, right. If it, they can help. They can understand the facts better. They can vote for a better policy. They can shift even a conservative party to a the economic rationale for fighting climate change, which is that you can't effectively create a budget in this day and age, which pretends that climate change isn't going to ravage so many different sectors from housing to agriculture to electricity to everything. So there are very strong economic, you know, classic conservative, um, yeah. you know, reasons to fight this stuff. Um, but it just takes voices right so is it is it actually something that we need to be able to put aside an okay boomer reaction and find a dip, a diplomacy <laughs> route or a a negotiation tactic or a like some other method in order to change things yeah seems a bit hard if if changing things because it's hard is the excuse not to do it, then we're no better than the boomers. Well, we would think that being lazy millennials. Yeah, wouldn't we? High on avocado. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we won't be offending any boomers with this one because they probably don't know what podcasts are, do they? We might have. A My dad still calls this a radio show. A radio show. He's like your radio. He calls it yeah. That's quite nice. All right, I'll take it. All right. Oh, I'm going to do something uh, just to wrap up this um, this boomer chat because we're talking about your dad for a while. Um, I'm going to bring up something which I might regret because it's still it's still potentially got juice in it. I I could I could oh my god I could reuse this, and I'm just I'm sacrificing it to tell the story. Okay. And I just want you to acknowledge that I could I'm have so pu- excited. I could have I could have pulled this off. I could have I could have waited and I could have made this work, but instead I'm just gonna tell you, okay? Oh my god. So this year, uh, around May, I had a great idea. And I thought <laughs> you know what's gonna be funny. This was in the midst of the Skype war. This is in the midst of you grabbing photos of me, putting them as your profile picture on Skype, right? In, in this kind of back and forth needling, it's very low stakes prank war, right? I thought of an idea uh, of something that I was going to pull on you. And so what I did was in the lead up to Father's Day, I wrote and mailed... <laughs> a card to your dad, Peter Zabrecki, in which I wished him a happy Father's Day and told him what? told him that I uh, always loved and respected him and thought of him as a father and really appreciated it. <laughs> Got all the way to the end and then instead of signing Michael, I signed it Nick in the <laughs> hope that you oh would not God. have sent your father a Father's Day card. So he would open it up, read all the way to the end and think, oh, that's really sweet of Michael. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, it was Nick. That How does fucking Nick sent me a Father's Day card but not my own son? I did that. I wrote it. <laughs> so good. I sent it. It got fucking lost in the mail. I never heard anything from you. How? I never, got, never heard anything from you and I never heard anything from Peter. So as far as I know... It, that doesn't it, mean he didn't get it. You think he could have got it and then not spoken to you about it? 100%. 100%. He wouldn't have brought 100%. it up. 100%. Oh. So I it think might it's have happened. more likely than it getting lost in the mail. Well, I have lost. I'm going to ask him about it. Okay, please do. Um, I'm very curious now. I have you're, lost mail to Australia before. 
That is so fucking good. I wish I thought of that. I can't believe then That's so that he fucking good. If he had received a Father's Day card from me and not mentioned it to you for yeah. six months, that yeah. is fucking incredible. So much weirder. So much. That's so weirder. much better. <laughs> I suspect. I suspect that when I ask him, he'll be like, uh, "Oh yeah, I did actually." That's weird. <laughs> so, oh fuck, that is awesome. Yes, with this, um, that is so fucking funny. What kind of card did you choose? Oh, it was just like super, a generic Happy Father's Day card. Super softy. Yeah, it was like really, it was like rabbits and flowers. I think. Yeah, like really middle of the road card. There when wasn't was a, Father's Day? Wasn't a joke. It was just straight down the line sentimentality. <laughs> I haven't been home yet since Father's Day. Yeah. And my mum likes to put all the cards that we get up on the chest of drawers. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> well, I now salute I'm... salute you. Thank you. Now I'm eagerly waiting. Um, all right. If you've, uh, if you've enjoyed this, uh, I'm so delighted. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Um, and I hope that you will tell uh, at least two checkout attendants at the next supermarket that you visit that you've just been enjoying the Deep Ford experience. Um, and they can probably direct them to facebook.com forward slash deep Fort or twitter.com slash deep Fort or tell them to go on Apple Podcasts and just have a look at all those five-star ratings you wonderful people have been giving us. Um, if you've got a question or a follow-up, send it to deepfort at gmail.com. If uh, you have any suggestions for the improvement of uh, mail between Australia and New Zealand, send it to New Zealand Post because they could use the help. Uh, that's it. Should we do a mailbag? That's it. Can I just do a quick? Yeah, can oh, I yeah. do a quick shout out first because it's going to be a bit like. Yeah, it'll take no time. I just want to do a quick shout out because um, there's a, like a handful of people that I know that, you know, li- that listen to. Uh, this they clearly don't uh, don't value their time at all. Um, but I get messages every now and then when we um, post an episode, and I know that these people listen, and I think it's really nice because I wouldn't listen to this. Um, but um, I know that I'll just list the names. Um, Michael and Caitlin O.D. Yeah. Love you guys. Maggie, Dave W. Webb. Um, I know Austin listens to it all the time. Um, and probably should have probably should have written a list down before I started this. But, uh, oh, yeah, Casper as well. Um, those guys are constantly ben Camp. messaging me and, and saying that they like the ep- – like, like the uh, – the content and got them thinking or whatever, or it was shit. Sometimes they say it was shit. Um, Casper said on on our um, a simulation theory episode that it was the stupidest thing we've ever talked about. Uh, so it's just that kind of. Uh, and Sean, I'm guessing, um, listens, but I've never met him, so whatever. Well, that's very sweet. Um, we appreciate. That was my, that's my shout out. We'd love to hear from people. It's it does make it all feel worthwhile because let me tell you, speaking to this guy regularly does not feel worthwhile. Um, no, it doesn't. Some real tensions. <laughs> How about a mailbag? Yes, please. Mailbag, mailbag. It's the weekly mailbag. Deep thoughts, mailbag. Weekly mail back. Deep mail back. mail back. That's a good jingle. That's a really good jingle, actually. You like that one? You know why it's good? You know why I like it? Because not you hard. pulled it off. You pulled off a vibe. You went for a vibe and you uh-huh. pulled it off. At, and it's at first listen, you're like, I remember when I first heard Coldplay's Yellow <laughs> on MTV. And I was probably like 12. And I was just like, you know, when you're used to like listening to SAFM and like mainstream shit. And there was just some guys going, like singing like a bit like drab. I remember thinking, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Bullshit. And then I grew to really love them. And then, grew you know, to really and then I became not. too embarrassed. So, <laughs> <that> I, so. 
<laughs> so I just abandoned them. <laughs> <laughs> For my own self-image. So I guess the metaphor is that one day you will turn on this jingle. Is that what you're saying? Who knows? Who knows? It could be the yellow. Oh, the gosh, I could use some of those uh, residuals. Uh, okay. Uh, four emails. For, oops, that's not the word. Four emails today. Uh, let's start with number one. YouTube is changing its terms of service. That's going in the bin. Uh, help us protect you. Security advice from Google. Nope. If we get locked out of this account, then it will disappear. Now, to the interest. This is such a things. good segment. To the interests. We have a uh, an email here from a Joel Sprig sent on the 9th of October. Topical. Uh, I remember him. The subject. He <laughs> says... Actually, sent it from his work email address, which is awesome. <laughs> potentially an indictment of uh, of yes, uh, his time. Um, <laughs> yes, his subject line is: "Is pet taxidermy the way to go?" Question mark. His body. Nice. Discuss or don't. I don't mind. Please do. With love and squalor, Joel. <laughs> I is, couldn't get less. I'm just giving you. I'm just, just, just giving throwing you it out there. The thought here, mate. Is pet tax? You want this material? Well, you can. Is pet taxidermy the way to go, Michael Zabrahi? Quite enjoy taxidermy. Do as you enjoy good taxidermy and as visual art? Okay, so you enjoy I bad enjoy taxidermy. All kinds. Really? You'd oh, yeah, look at a good taxidermy animal. Definitely. What do you think? I think they should taxi derby humans. Might have some. Like relatives and stuff. Just to stand in the corner <laughs> of the room while you're eating a <laughs> eating a sandwich. Just you never know, the next generation boards. might be, you know, instead of having photo frames, they'll get grandpa's head mounted on the wall like an elephant. <laughs> so should it be. Um have you have you ever? But had, why is it the way to go? Like what? Well, that's the question. Have you ever had a pet like a like a stuffable pet? What the fuck does that mean? What the yeah, fuck like did a, you just say to me? Have you ever had a stuffable? Have I ever pet? had a stuffable pet? Like a dog or a cat or you know you don't stuff a snake, do you? Or a rat? Have you ever seen rat rat raxidermy? Have you have you had a dog or a cat? I just cat? want you to keep talking. <laughs> just tell me if you had a dog or a cat. I want to know whether or not you've had a pet which deserves to be I don't like the stuffed. idea. I don't like the idea of of having a dog and you coming over and looking at that dog and thinking it's stuffable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the que- like that's that's the purpose, right? You said you supported pet taxidermy. I just want to know whether it's something you've got practical application for. I've buried all my animals. What animals have you had? What pets have you had? Dogs. Dogs. Okay, Dogs. thank you. And I killed a fish. <laughs> what? What? You can't... You... <laughs> Tell the I'm not story. Killing the fish. I got... I bought... I, on an impulse buy, I was at Marrying Shopping Centre <laughs> and wanted to buy a fish because it was very... Cost effective, in my opinion, at the time, because I had five dollars for companionship, and they gave you a fish, and then I bought it and took it home, and then my parents said, "Where are you going to put that fish?" And I said, "I have no idea." <laughs> <laughs> and it died within hours. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So what? You just had it yeah. in like a bag of like a plastic bag and you looked around at home and yeah. thought, oh, I don't even have a bowl. And then <laughs> just. I did. No. Didn't think we'd have through it all. I don't know why my parents let me do that. What do you mean <laughs> let you Presumably do it? Presumably to teach me a lesson. Wait, so well, they, they were there when you bought fish in a bag. You, oh, they were there? They, no, I think I, I bought, I bought it. I went off on my own while they went shopping because they let us do that. And then when I met up with them, 
you know, if, at the assigned time, I just had a fish. <laughs> And so their thought process was not, let's take it back. He was obviously a small child who should not be allowed to buy a fish um, just willy-nilly. Their thought process was, (laughs) well, look, we'll let him kill one fish and then he won't do it again. I haven't thought about this story for a long time, but I think it's probably that. Knowing my dad, he would have been like, let him keep the fish. Keep Teach him a valuable lesson. Know. I have never bought another. I've never bought another fish. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. As you've flushed your best friend down the toilet, um, yeah, it probably <laughs> deterred you from any future investments in the fish market. I actually do remember him flapping around on the lawn. On the lawn, his final breath. Yeah, he ended up on the lawn. <laughs> I think my dog ate it actually. What do you? <laughs> What do you mean he ended up on the lawn? You didn't just uh, I release d- I can't him. can't remember why he was on the lawn. <laughs> I think, I can't remember why he was on the lawn, but I, vi- I have a clear image in my brain right now of it flapping. It's a black fish flapping on the lawn and then us trying to keep our German shepherd away, which we s- stopped trying to do after a while. <laughs> wow. What a um, nightmare story. Any any story you've ever told which has some something to do with pets or veterinarians ends in a horror show. <laughs> it was weird. It's like you know, dogs just know that they're going to the vet. I've had to put down two dogs, and yeah, they do both times. They they just love going to the they they love getting in the car any other time, and then as soon as you're going to the vet to kill them, they just know. That's but they weird. know that they know that. Like, what else do you know? They know that without euthanasia <laughs> is the end point anyway. Like they never like going to the vets, even if it's just for like an injection. Yeah, but uh, I mean, both of my both of my dogs that have put down, they've always liked going in the car. Sure. So yeah, they're probably I mean, they pretty intuitive in terms of knowing, sensing. Like, and I think we did try to be like, yeah, but. Even like trying to compensate for that. Yeah. I remember distinctly trying to compensate for that, like, and saying, come on, Jack, we're going to the park. Uh-huh. In case he like picked up on the word park and associated like park with yeah. running around. Yeah. Um, and he was just like, no, thank, no you. thank you. No. No, thanks. I'll stay here. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. The last moments of my dad's life are pretty <laughs> what funny. What are we talking about? <laughs> thank you for your email, Joel. Um, <laughs> Thanks, and a uh, serious question here uh, from uh, Sean. Uh, he's titled it A Serious Question. Oops, that has triggered Siri. <laughs> um, Why? How? I said a, a serious question and it heard, hey, Siri. Are you serious? I'm 100% serious. A serious hey, Siri. question. What's up? Oh my god, I did mine too. Yeah. That's fine. Sorry, I'm not sure what you want me to change. I don't want you to change anything, babe. That's I love good. you just the way you are. Super sexist. I can't believe you kept your Siri as a woman. Um, what do you mean? What's yours? Hey Siri, tell me a joke. I got my best friend a fridge for her birthday. I can't wait to see her face light up when she opens it. That sounds like me. Yeah, I asked it to um, map your voice, um, <laughs> just to, so I could enjoy. I would not like to that. do. That's um, that's what they did for um, soothing. That's what they did for uh, 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 um, wheelchair uh, scientist. Um, what's his name? Why can't I think of his name? Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, yeah. Stephen Hawking? Are you Stephen Hawking. Oh, my God, wheelchair scientist. I know. I can't believe cool. I didn't think of his name. Um, yeah. He, because, yeah. because they had nice so one. much footage of him speaking when he was younger, scientists took, like, thousands of hours of his oh. recordings and made a custom voice so that he could actually speak using his actual voice. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> Wait, so... So when he was younger, before all 
Yeah. The accident with her. Yeah. He, he would just be like, hi, uh, my name is Steven. No, the reason the that you're mimicking it like that is because they had a bad voice. Like that was the limits of the technology when he was first in oh. a wheelchair, right? He's, you saw the... Um, right. The Eddie... Uh, the universe is expanding. Yeah. But they, they produced a much more um, lifelike and realistic um, version of his voice based on recordings of how he used to speak. Did they? Yeah. It's kind of amazing. That's pretty cool. Uh, thank you for your it, question, Sean. I, lo- I love this... Te- Wait, there's a bit of a lag here and I'm not vibing it. But um, I just wanted to say um, quickly... <laughs> That speaking of scientists, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson's stock gone down recently, hasn't it? Sure has. I mean, even apart from the, even other uh, aside from like the, the Me Too stuff that he was wrapped up in that was a bit murky and unclear. Yeah, he just I've heard him on a few podcasts and he just like talks all the time. He interrupts people and stuff, but I feel like everyone's turning on him. Me yeah, included. yeah, I think he has. Um... Look, uh, uh, oh, this is too late in the podcast to get into this, but um, I think that if you feel hard done by, regardless of whether or not the uh, claims against you are accurate, if you feel hard done by and that some injustice has been served, when you're out in public and engaging with people, it's going to colour the way you interact with them, isn't it? In terms of your scepticism yeah, or um, desire to speak your mind properly or just a sense of indignity in in the way that things have been handled. So I'm not surprised that his interactions yeah, have yeah. changed. Be curious to see, yeah. cause he was often, um, he was a bit of a Colbert guy for a while. Um, I'll be interested to see if he yeah. makes those kind of uh, talk show appearances again. Well, he had it, Steve Colbert had him back since. Yeah. Was... But I don't know how Col- that was. Colbert received. doesn't shy away from those shy away from the questions but i've always got it in the back of my head that these guys the late night guys when they ask them these like dry, dicey questions they're just like i know really aware of the view count going up because potentially it's going to read really well yeah but at the same time it could go really badly and that would produce bad press and negative coverage so there is still some risk associated with it but not for colbert really not for them uh, it depends on the the people involved if you ask a um, yeah. a question which is perceived by the audience as being inappropriate or inattrusive or misframing the dilemma or not capturing the sentiment, then you can very quickly look like the bad guy. Very true, Nicholas, as always. Thank you for your question, Sean. I think that's an out, right? That was nice. We I dug that one. It was nice. I enjoyed that. We warmed into it and then it went good. Effortless. <laughs> Effortless. <laughs> you should include us reviewing our own podcast <laughs> at the end of it, the thinking end. that the. Uh, thinking so, that it's okay, so I've turned off. the microphone off and uh, yeah, I think another 10 out of 10 from me. <laughs> Dude, we smashed that. That we was a great podcast. Out the park. I think that one's probably going to get. so good. That's going to get raves.